Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is already the 4th of January and I wanted to start this reading vlog now. So um, yeah, January is upon us and I started this month and this reading year with my reread of Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. This is the second book in the series and I'm already a little bit in but not that far. I honestly wanted to have finished this book by now and wanted to have started Hollow Pox which is book three but yeah. Things are just not going according to plan. But yeah, this is a series all about Morgan Crow, who was told that she would die on her 12th birthday, but then stuff happens and on her 11th birthday she's actually taken away to this magical land called Nevermoor by a guy called Jupiter North and he tells her she has to compete in the trials of the Rundress Society so she can stay in Nevermore forever. And that's what the first book is about. Now Wondersmith kind of continues from there and since I don't want to spoil you I'm not gonna say what happens in this one but I've already read it in the beginning of 2020 and it was one of my favorite books of 2020 so yeah I'm really happy <laughs> to reread this but just not that fast with it, so we'll see. Um, yeah, that's what I'm currently reading. Also, I have started an audiobook. It's called The Furies by Katie Lowe, and it is a book that is kind of weird. It's about this girl who has a very tragic family background, and she goes to this new school and kind of falls in with the wrong crowd, I guess. But so far, nothing really has happened. I think I'm about two hours into the audiobook. Um, yeah, so far, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I feel like nothing happens really but I really like the audiobook narrator so we'll see about that. And then I'm also in the middle of my reread of the last Lord of the Rings book, The Return of the King. I'm reading that one to my partner so that obviously takes a little bit of time. We're about 100 pages in. We're in the middle of the or like right before the battle um, of Minas Tirith. So yeah I love Lord of the Rings obviously and I'm so happy to reread these books. So that's what I am currently reading and I guess if you want to know how my general reading goes you will have to stay put and watch the rest of this video. But also January is my birthday month so I'm very very excited about that and I hope I will get some good books for this. So I just got home from the library. Today's the 5th of January. The library is closed but you can order books and then pick them up. And I decided to walk because it is way too cold for my bike. And so yeah, I was out 90 minutes walking to the library. I don't know if it was the best idea but I'll let you know <laughs> if I have a cold now. But I got The Kiss of Deception. The Heart of Betrayal and The Beauty of Darkness, all by Mary E. Pearson. Pearson sorry. Um, yeah, I'm really interested to see how I like this series because I know many people love it. But sometimes with these kind of romancy, fantasy YA books, they're just not for me because I'm not a good romance reader. But we'll see. I wanted to give this a try and they had them in English at the library. So it's the perfect opportunity. And then I got this book again because I didn't manage to read it last year. This is a memoir about a woman of color who found out that her grandfather was a Nazi. And this is kind of like her memoir and family story. So yeah, got four books now. And I probably won't read any of these in January because of the medieval thon. But we'll see how Hey guys, goes. so today is the 7th of January. We have all somehow survived what happened yesterday, I guess. Um, yeah, the news have been really weird and I have been on Twitter for a while. It's also my first day back to work, so I shouldn't be on Twitter so much. Um, but it was just really weird and crazy to see what's going on in the US right now and obviously when you see this video this will be old news and hopefully by then there will be a new president Joe Biden and we'll see how this country can heal but obviously 
yeah, today is just, just quite weird. But last night I finished Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. I read a lot yesterday, like 230 pages or something. So yeah, I love this book so much. I gave it five stars on a reread and it's just one of my favorite series of all time. Like this is high up there and I love this. This is so diverse. It's so fun. It's so creative. You have basically everything in here and I'm just so excited to get into the third book. So I already started it last night. I only read the first chapter of Hollow Pox and then I had to read two pages more because it was so good. I wanted to know what's going on. Obviously I haven't read Hollow Pox before. This is my first read of it. So not like um, Nevermore and Wondersmith where I knew what would happen. This one I don't know and I want to keep finding out because as I said the series is just so so good and I loved how it hooked me from the first chapter and I needed to know more. So I'm so excited to keep reading that later today. I also listened to a little bit more of my audiobook The Furies by Katie Lowe and I don't have anything new to say about that. Still not really interested. I still like the audiobook narrator and I'm almost halfway through now. So I think if anything special wants to happen, it should happen soon. <laughs> because yeah, otherwise this will be a very mediocre book for me. And I uh, thought today that maybe like pretentious teen me would have enjoyed this book. Um, but I'm just a little bit too old for it, I think. So we'll see about that. So it's the 8th of January. I look a mess because I just went grocery shopping and now my hair is all messy and wet because it's snowing and work is crazy as well so yay for me. But I managed to read another 100 pages in Holopox yesterday and I love this book so freaking much. So if you have not started the series, please do. It is so amazing. I think whenever you feel like, oh well, now I have a pretty good understanding of the world, Jessica Townsend throws things, uh, throws in something new. So you're surprised and you're intrigued and you want to learn more. And it's just always really hard to stop reading this because, yeah, this is just a book that I want to read without pause. Obviously that doesn't work <laughs> because uh, there's other things in life I have to do, but I absolutely love it and I think you would love it too. So today is the 10th of January and that means it is officially the start of the Medievalathon and I have uploaded a TBR, but I'm still in the middle of Hollow Pox, so I don't think I can start this TBR just yet um, because I really want to finish Hollow Pox before I get into all the books I chose for the Medievalathon, which isn't ideal, but yeah, I just want to finish that book. So I am currently thinking about switching out the first challenge book that I've chosen for Hollow Pox. I think it would work, but I will think about that a little bit more. Hey guys, so today's the 13th of January and I just finished my first like new read and uh, my first book for the Medievalathon, which is Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend, the third book in the Nevermore series. This was definitely a journey. I haven't updated you in a couple of days, but what happened is that this book got really weird. Uh, <laughs> got really real. So um, it had a lot of the themes that, you know, we're seeing in the world right now with a dangerous pandemic and the government trying to hush things up and then lies being spread and hate going around and 
there was this one day where I even got nightmares because it was just so much like what we're seeing right now and obviously this week was so crazy um i think it was last week but whatever um it's just been a crazy time with everything that's been going on in the us and so yeah it took me a little bit longer to finish this i still gave it five stars i think it's perfection i think that not a single word word in this book is out of place and yeah it's just really good and i can't wait for the fourth book <laughs> and now I'm so mad because I will have to wait like a year or maybe even longer. Like I need more of this and I love it. So yeah, I'm so glad that this was my first book of the year and or like my first like new book because I had reread Wondersmith before it. But um, yeah, this was just fantastic. My first favorite of 2021. And now I will start on my actual medieval thon TBR. And the first book I have to read for the clergy profession that I want to go for is Restore Me by Tehera Mafi. This is a reread as well, um, because I've been rereading the Shadow Me series, so I can finally read the last book, because it was originally a trilogy, now it's six books, and yeah, this is the fourth one, and I think this will be a very quick read, but I also I also thought so with Hollow Pox, so no promises there. But yeah, I'm excited to reread this. Um, I do have a soft spot in my heart for this series, and yeah, I'll let you know more soon. So yay, we're back with the pandemic hairstyle. <laughs> um, today is the... 15th of January and uh, yesterday I almost read half of Restore Me by Tara Mafi. Her books are just super super quick reads. Um, so yeah I read like 100 and I don't know 80 pages something like that and I hope that I will finish this very soon. Probably not today but maybe tomorrow so um, I will have my first official Medieval Athon book read and yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, as I said, I just love rereading this series because it's so quick and easy. It's really just a lot of fun. And then also I have one and a half hours left in my audiobook The Furies by Katie Lowe. And yeah, I'm still not enjoying it. I think it's just a glorification of violence and drug use. And yeah, I, <laughs> I feel very mad about it. Um, so yeah, I hope that I can finish this soon because I really want to start a new audiobook, um, something I'm actually like really interested in. And I thought about um, the 10,000 Doors of January, I think it's called. Um, that's one thing I'm very interested in, but we'll see. I just want something more fantasy right now, so I hope that I can find a fun audiobook for myself soon, soon, soon. Me and the TH, we're not good friends. So today is the 18th of January and I have a quick reading update. Last night I finished Restore Me by Tehera Mafi. This is the fourth book in the Shadow Me series and I've been meaning to reread the series so I can get to the last book, which I haven't read yet, but it came out last year. So I'm a bit late with that. But I had a lot of fun with this reread. Um, with this reread and it is a very, very short book that you can fly through. Um, it has more pages than it should have and yeah I just I really enjoyed my time with this. This is basically like a soap opera but post-apocalyptic post and with superpowers so if that sounds interesting to you I would recommend the series. On reread I decided to give this book 3.5 stars. I'm not quite sure what I gave it the first time around, if I gave it 4 stars or 3.5, but around that realm. It's just a super fun series, but I wouldn't expect like the greatest things to happen here. I mean, for the length of this novel, pretty much nothing happens. Like, it's all like in a monologue of the characters and the drama. And there is a couple of things I really do like about this book. For example, we have a important side character who is wearing a headscarf. And this is a world that is kind of post religions and post uh, kind of countries and stuff like that. So it does have a different meaning than it would have today, but I still think it's good that Tahara Mafi added a character like that in here. And yeah, I will continue on. 
with the next book um, probably in February but for now I want to continue with my medieval thon TBR and so the next book I have to read because that was my first one that was officially on my TBR and then the second one is the archive of the forgotten this is the sequel to the library of the unwritten which I have read in November so yeah I'm really excited I only got like eight pages into it last night but yeah I'll definitely keep you updated on this one So today's the 19th of January and last night I started Archive of the Forgotten. This is a sequel to The Library of the Unwritten and I am loving it. Like I was into the story from the first page, it's action from the first page, the characters are still so intriguing and I feel like there is a lot of dynamic between the characters, like their relationships are really changing. This book is set I think six months after the first one, so there obviously have been some changes and some repercussions from the first book and we are dealing with that but then there's also this whole new mystery that just appeared and yeah. This is just so much fun to read. So today is the 20th of January and last night I finished my audiobook The Furies by Katie Lowe. I must say that overall this book was very underwhelming and I decided to give it two stars in the end. I would not recommend it. I think it's very boring, it's very pretentious and yeah, there isn't really a lot that I enjoyed about this book. I think that the ending had like yeah, like maybe two or three good sentences and stuff like that. And I think that maybe if you're like a very pretentious teenager and nobody can understand you and stuff like that, you will enjoy this. But yeah, the mystery was so bad. And yeah, I just don't really know what the point of this book is apart from being pretentious as fuck. So yeah, two stars for that. Um, I also started a new audiobook, it's called Red Sister by Mark Lawrence and I'm really really excited to start this series, I've been meaning to for a long time now, but it has such a wintry cover, so <laughs> I've always been waiting for winter, <laughs> I don't know if that's just stupid, but I'll let you know what I think about that, I've only listened to about 15 minutes so far, um, but yeah, I'm so excited. So now I will have to go out and buy medical masks because starting tomorrow normal masks will not be allowed anymore in my country. They're not good enough anymore and so yeah you can't even go grocery shopping without medical masks starting tomorrow. So I will try to get my shopping done today and I hope I can get some of these masks but honestly like <laughs> I'm so afraid that everyone will have this idea today. So yeah it's stressing me out a lot actually. I don't know what is going on with our government um, to make these kind of decisions like, you know, they made the decision basically somewhere last night and everyone's expected to adhere to it tomorrow and I don't know how they think this will work. These kind of medical masks are way more expensive and you also can't reuse them, so yeah, I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> um, and we'll see if this actually helps with COVID because honestly, nothing really has helped yet because people just don't do what they're told to do. So I don't think wearing like fancy masks for grocery shopping is going to change the game, but whatever. <laughs> like I'm just starting to get really pissed at all of these things because I have been you know, at home for almost a year now. I've doing I've been doing home office for almost a year and I have no social context apart from my partner. He's the only person that I meet. And yeah, I've visited my family, I think three times last year. And one of those was before COVID. So yeah, I'm just, I'm getting so mad at all of these like, weird rules that don't make sense in my head and you know the really important ones like um, regulating the way people work together, shutting down offices where people could work from home, that's the thing that would change stuff, you know, not making people wear like better masks and better masks, you know, one of these masks is like five euro and you're supposed to change it like every day and we can only wear it for like 
I don't know, 75 minutes, I think, and then it will lose its effect. <laughs> so, what? What is this? But, yeah. So, let's see whether I can find one of those fucking masks and survive. The will of the people has been heard, and the will of the people has been heeded. So, today's the 21st of January. I can't believe that yesterday the whole inauguration thing went so well and there was like no attacks and stuff like that. I'm so so glad and even though I don't live in the US this was I think a major moment for the whole world um, because the US is such a big country and also because I think it can be a symbol that countries can you know get out of such regimes as well and that democracy is stronger than dictators or wannabe dictators so yeah I hope that over the years we will see other countries come around too um, yeah. so reading I have been reading a little bit but honestly I've been just watching the inauguration stuff so um, I managed to read a little bit more in the archive of the forgotten I'm now about a third through the book and I'm starting to really ship Rami and Hero so <laughs> we'll see how that goes but yeah so far this book is so much fun I feel like it looks a lot shorter than it is because there's so many words on the page so yeah I don't know why they decided to print it that way but I'm making my way through this um, slowly but I'm enjoying every word of it and I think this is such a fun concept and yesterday I also ordered my copy of the first book because I've read the first book from the library so I didn't have my own copy but now I ordered it because Book Depository wasn't shipping here for a while because of Brexit and now they do again and that was the only place that I could get the matching cover from quite easily. So yeah, this is a fun journey and then I also started my audiobook um, The Red Sister I think it's called and I do like it so far but the thing is I've been listening to about an hour, a little bit more now and it is so softly spoken that I can't do anything while I listen to it <laughs> if I you know brush my teeth or I do the dishes I can't hear it well, <laughs> so that's when I usually listen to my audiobooks. So I will have to figure out a way to listen to it because I usually listen to audiobooks on my phone because that's easiest. I don't have to carry around my uh, laptop. But maybe with this audiobook I will have to use my laptop because the, the volume just goes up higher than my phone. I don't know. It's a little bit weird. I've never had this problem before, but with this one it's really bad. So yeah, that's the update. Um, such an exciting week. I'm so glad that this is my birthday week and we all get to live in it. I hope that nothing bad will happen now because I have such good vibes right now. And yeah, it was so nice to see all these like late night house like I love uh, watching Seth Meyers and also Jimmy Kimmel and it was so nice and obviously Trevor Noah he's back as well now after his like Christmas break it was so nice to see them enjoying not having to do political education and then in that sense anymore I can't wait for John Oliver to be back <laughs> And yeah, I think if you haven't seen the Jimmy Kimmel video of the 20th uh, January, um, definitely go watch it. It was so hilarious. They've been working on this for forever. It was almost as good as seeing John Oliver um, blow up the 2020. Um, so yeah, you definitely have to see that. Uh, yeah, but I'll go now <laughs> because this video will be almost long again, which is the trademark of my reading vlogs. So today's the 22nd. I made it to page 200 in Archive of the Forgotten. I can't really tell you anything new because my feelings are still exactly the same. I have a lot of fun with this book and I love the characters. Um, I think the muses are getting really annoying and I'm excited to see where that storyline goes. Um, but yeah, this is such a interesting and imaginative world. Um, that's just such good fun. I really like the characters. I'm really shipping the characters as well. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. And then I also listened to a little bit more of um, Red Sister and I am now about 10% into the book. 
But yesterday I had a discussion in one of the Discord groups for some like bookish content and we discussed problematic authors and they told me that Mark Lawrence actually is accused of quite um, yeah harsh sexist uh, stuff which I didn't know when I bought the book so I felt really really dumb and I don't really like supporting authors that are problematic but then we discussed it a little bit more and we agreed that it's very hard to read adult um, fantasy that is not written by problematic male authors so a lot of the very beloved people have had like some kind of problematic past or accusations and stuff like that. So I decided that I will continue with the audiobook, but you have this little disclaimer that, you know, if um, you want to buy that book, just go and uh, try to find some information and make sure that you really want to support this person. Because I think it always feels so weird when you buy a book and then you find out that the author is problematic. So yeah, just that little disclaimer there. Um, apart from that, I do still enjoy the book, um, yeah, and I uh, will probably talk more about that soon. But for now, it's my birthday weekend now, and I don't think I will listen to a lot of the audiobook while um, it's the weekend, so yeah, I'm really excited. So today's the 27th of January, and I have finally finished the Archive of the Forgotten by H.J. Hackworth. I had like... 40 pages left of this for so long now because of my birthday and it was just a little bit busy and then I was really exhausted but last night I finally finished this book and I decided to give it 4.5 stars as I did with the first one in the series as well. I really really enjoy these books. I think that the world that is created is so imaginative. You have this library in hell and in the second volume again you discover new wings that you haven't heard of in the first book before. Also you visit like other realms kind of because obviously there is not only Christianity in the world so there's a ton of different realms that you know, are similar to Hell, but also different. And I felt like with the first book, we saw even a little bit more of that. I feel like with this one, there wasn't so many changes of scenery. But then again, in this one, I feel like the characters developed a lot more and it was a lot more about the relationships and, you know, what makes a book. And yeah, I just really, really enjoyed this series. I think that you know, it is perfect for book lovers because it talks about books the whole time and also about, you know, what makes a reader, what makes a writer and stuff like that. And then also I think the characters are so interesting and morally grey and yeah, I just really enjoyed this. And even the person that is kind of like the bad guy in this one, um, she's not really bad. She just believes in something that... Is dangerous <laughs> but she does it with like good intentions for her people so yeah I feel like this is just a very well-rounded adult kind of hell-centered bookish fantasy series <laughs> and I really really like that so yeah I'm I hope that maybe we will get the third book this year I'm not quite sure usually these come out in the autumn so maybe there will be number three this year I would really appreciate that <laughs> and yeah so this was the second book that I read for the clergy profession of the medievalathon and now I can finally go into my third book for that so the book I want to pick up next is called Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. I have not read the back. I think from the cover um, we can expect this to be a very harrowing hard read, um, but it's also a shorter read. This is only 350 pages and I mean the Archive of the Forgotten is also 350 pages, but the text is like really small <laughs> in this one. Um, you have a, a lot um, bigger text and it's also YA. So I hope that I can fly through this um, during the rest of the week now. And yeah, then I will be level 3 of the clergy uh, profession. 
Also, I've listened to a little bit more of my audiobook, Red Sister. I have now 16 hours left of it, so I listen to about three and a half hours now, which is not a lot. Um, I'm just getting into the story now, but I think it is very interesting. I um, yeah, really interested to see where it goes because right now it's just a lot of setup and you get to know the world and I think the world is very compelling and very interesting and also what we've seen of the life with the nuns so far, very interesting. But one thing that bothers me is really the audiobook. For one, the narrator speaks very softly, so it is so hard to hear. Like, I have my phone up to the highest volume, and if I brush my teeth or anything like that, and I have a little bit of sound <laughs> apart from the audiobook, I almost can't hear it anymore. <laughs> so that's very annoying. And then the other thing is that she doesn't really do voices for the characters, so you always have to pay very close attention to who's speaking right now, because they all sound the same. Like, um, yeah, it's just a little bit difficult to um, follow when there's like dialogue and stuff. So I guess I wouldn't really recommend the audiobook too much. I think maybe this is best, better to read in person, but apart from that I am enjoying it and I will continue for now. So last night I read the first 135 pages of Asking for It. And this is definitely a hard read. So far, um, this book is um, kind of separated into two parts. You have um, like one year ago and then now kind of thing, or the year before and the year after, something like that. So you know that uh, there will be some kind of an event that separates these two timelines. And uh, I think that this is kind of like an interesting idea, but it's also a little bit hard to read because you think this is just like a prologue, but then it is half of the book. <laughs> and also um, the main character is very unlikable and you can totally see that this is done on purpose, that this uh, is definitely something that, you know, will play into the message at the end of the book. But it's also hard to read about a character <laughs> that you don't really root for, but also you know the whole time that something terrible is going to happen to her. So. Yeah, that makes it a little bit of a weird read at the beginning, but I'm now almost at the halfway point, so I hope that today I will switch into the second part and read a little bit more about that, and I think then it will be even more hard-hitting. We'll see how it goes, um, but yeah, it's very interesting so far. So it is the 1st of February, so this is the last clip for this vlog. I have a couple of things to update you on, because I wasn't really feeling like filming the last couple of days, and so so I have accumulated a couple of things. First of all, I finished my um, read of Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. This is a book that focuses on themes of sexual violence, slut shaming and um, victim shaming. So um, yeah, this book has a ton of trigger warnings, but it's also a really, really good book. And I decided in the end to give it five stars because I felt like this was handled in a very realistic way way and I have mentioned before that the first 100 pages or so are a little bit hard to get through because the main character is so unlikable but it's definitely done on purpose to show that even if you don't like a character you still don't want her or him to suffer through the things that um, this main character goes through in the later half of the book. And yeah I just felt like it was very realistic and I'll talk more about this in the wrap-up part. And then I uh, reread Monstrous Volume 4. This is The Chosen. And um, yeah, this is the only comic book series that I'm currently following. And I love Monstrous a lot. The main thing I love about it is the art style. I think it is absolutely gorgeous and apart from that I realized that I am now really sucked into the story like rereading this fourth volume showed me that um, I'm very comfortable with the world by now by now the beginning is a bit confusing because you have a ton of characters and some really <laughs> look the same sometimes and then there's also characters that have different forms and stuff like that so it is a little bit hard to keep track of but I realized that I just love this world so much I'm like really hooked I love the characters most of them are like extremely morally gray and 
yeah, I just really, really like this world and I want to know what um, comes next for all of these characters, especially Kippa. She's the cutest. Like, I love Kippa with all of my heart. So then I started reading volume 5, which is War Child. This is the one that just came out last year and yeah, so far I can't really... Um, say too much about it. Um, obviously the things that are happening in here are spoilers but there's two characters that I really want to meet and I hope that the volume I'm reading right now or the issue is the one where they actually meet so we'll see about that. Um, but yeah I just love everything about this series and I think this might be the first one I give five stars to. We'll see how it progresses but I just you know I have all the feels about these characters and yeah really really um, intrigued to see the rest of this because I'm exactly halfway through now so I will finish this probably today and talk more about it in my February vlog. So um, this was the third level of the clergy career for Medieval Thon, um, a book with a person on the cover. Then The Chosen was the fourth level which is um, the chosen one trope and this is my fifth level um, for the clergy profession, this is read something that I wanted to read. So yeah, finishing that book, I will have done um, everything for the clergy profession in the medieval thon, which was my goal for that. So yeah, I feel very accomplished. And as I said, if you want to hear more about Monstrous, stay for the wrap-up part and then also check in into the February vlog and wrap-up next month where I talk about War Child. So welcome back to the wrap-up part of this video. If I do look a little bit red in the face, it's because I just did my dance workout. And if you're asking yourself now why I did my dance workout right before filming, that's a question that I'm still looking for an answer for. So yeah, keep your opinions to yourself. You're gonna live with sweaty red me. So the book I started my reading year off with is Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. This is the second book in the Nevermore series and this was a reread for me because I first read this book in 2020 and it was one of my favorite books of the year and that has not changed. I gave this book five out of five stars on reread. I absolutely love this series. It is following Morgan Crow who has always been told that on her 12th birthday she will die but then on her 11th birthday she's actually taken by this weird man called Jupiter North and he brings her to Nevermore which is a world she didn't know even existed and there she is supposed to compete in some trials to get into a secret society kind of thing and in the second volume we follow her after the trials and see what her life looks like after. So I don't want to spoil too much, even though the title is already a little bit spoilery. But yeah, I just love this series. I think it is magical and wonderful. I love Mar Morgan as a main character. And I just think it is very creative, all the different creatures. It's also super, super funny. I think the humor in this is on point. And yeah, I must say that I love Nevermore and Wondersmith the same. So yeah, these are definitely great books. Then on the 10th of January was the start of the Medievalathon. This is a readathon hosted by Holly Reads. I think the channel name is on YouTube. I'll try to remember to link it down below. But uh, this is a readathon where you try to achieve a high rank. The highest rank is Emperor or Empress, and that is when you have read seven books. And this is a month long read along or a readathon. So I love Medievalathon. I um, really wanted to participate and the first book I finished for that which was not for a prompt which I will get to in a second is Holopox. This is the third book in the Nevermore series by Jessica Townsend and this one was the one I hadn't read before and yeah this was also a great read. I definitely had a harder time reading this because it is hard to read with the things that are happening right now. You have a weird kind of pandemic in this book. There's also political uh, uproar. There is people trying to storm a building, which was not fun to read about in the beginning of January. So yeah, this definitely hit closer to home. It also had a lot more information about what Morrigan is and what her future might be. 
I really, really enjoyed this still. I gave it five stars as well. I just felt like it's not the best time to read this book. I think I will enjoy it more on a reread when we have left all the craziness of, you know, 2020 and also January of 2021 behind us. But yeah, um, I really love this world. And as I said, it's just so funny, so witty, so clever and magical. And I love it. So yeah, again, five stars for this book as well. And so with this book, I managed to get out of prison for the Medievalathon, and that meant that I um, started with my Medievalathon TBR, the books I had actually chosen for the prompts. So for this year's Medievalathon, you could choose different professions, and you had five challenges for each profession. I decided to go for the clergy profession because it matched my books quite nicely. The first challenge for the clergy profession and the next book I finished was an underrated book and for that I chose A Restore Me by Tehera Mafi. This is the first book in the second trilogy in the Shadow Me realm. So this I chose because I feel like a lot of people have read the first trilogy but I don't really know a lot of people who continued on with the series. For me it was kind of like, yeah. A weird thing because I read Shadow Me so late that I actually read it right before the second trilogy came out so I decided to continue with it. This was a reread for me because I still haven't read the last book so yeah I definitely have to keep up the pace with the reread because the last book has always almost been out for a year now. <laughs> And I still haven't managed to reread these books. These are super fast reads. I decided to give it a 3.5 stars after, uh, as a reread um, because honestly for the length of the book nothing much happens but I love the characters. I especially love Kenji and I love the new characters we get in this uh, new trilogy and yeah we just get more things revealed about Juliet. Now, if you have never heard of um, the Shadow Me series, it's about a girl called Juliette and she has a lethal touch. So when she touches people for a longer period of time, they will experience extreme pain and then die from it. And in the first trilogy, you follow her as she tries to navigate her kind of post-apocalyptic dystopian world. And they... Yeah, I don't want to spoil the first trilogy if you haven't heard of it, but this one follows up after that first trilogy where something major happens at the end and this deals with the kind of after that. And I really like that because this is a lot more political where you have the first trilogy being like more of this typical teenage girl tries to overthrow government plot and this one definitely is an interesting continuation because obviously there must be something after that whole deal, you know? So yeah, I really like that this book, this book decided to pick that up again and make it more political, but also more dramatic because for one, the angst is still there. And the second thing is that we learn that Juliet is not even who she thinks she is. The next book I finished then was my audiobook The Furies by Katie Lowe. This is the Dark Academics book club pick for January. I wasn't really sure whether I wanted to read the book at all because it doesn't sound interesting to me at all. But then I decided to pick it up on audio because usually that means that I'm just a little bit more forgiving with the books. I still decided to give it only two stars because yeah, this was just not a good book. In this book we follow a character, I think her name is Violet. I'm really bad with names, I'm sorry. Um, but she has a, bit, a little bit of a traumatic past. She lost her father and her sister. And then she gets to go to a new school, which is a private school. And she uh, kind of joins this group of friends um, that centers around Robin. And Robin is a very manipulative character. Um, I did kind of like her in some moments but it was just really over the top and honestly this book is so pretentious. I think if you like that kind of dark academia pretentious story this is a little bit more interesting for you but as someone who is an academic <laughs> I just I just can't with like all the pretentiousness like that's not my approach to a academia basically so yeah it just gets a little bit overwhelming there were a couple of things in here that i was glad that was mentioned um for example it uh, talked about artemisia the um, artist and stuff like that but for the most part this was just a horrendous mess of a story the characters were super boring and unlikable and yeah you just really didn't care like there's some messed up stuff happening in this book 
and you just don't care. So yeah, this was a fail for me, as I said. Um, probably will be on my worst books of 2020 list. The live show hasn't happened yet, but I think all the hosts of the book club are also not a big fan. So yeah, we'll see when that happens. Um, I'm interested to see the discussion of this. So the audiobook didn't fit any of the prompts for the clergy profession, but I counted it towards the Empress goal. So we're three books down so far. Then the next prompt was to read a book about books. And for that, I had chosen The Archive of the Forgotten by H.A. Hackworth. This is also a second book in a series, and this is a um, continuation of The Library of the Unwritten, which I had just finished in November. And I wasn't actually planning on picking up the sequel so soon, but then it fit the prompt perfectly, so I had to. <laughs> so this um, follows the library in hell, and it's a very interesting concept because basically the first book follows the ring, the wing of the unwritten books, and those are just books that authors have thought about but just never written down. And so they're all stored in this huge library in hell. And you also have some other wings and you explore a couple of them in the first book and then a couple more in this book. And you also get to see different um, parts of the afterlife. So for example, in the first book, they have to go to Valhalla. And this one, they go to a place that is very much inspired by Greek mythology. And yeah, so it's a very cool concept of this like afterlife hell situation. And I really like the characters in this. You're mainly following Claire, who was the head librarian in uh, the first book. Things happened, I'm not gonna spoil it, but she's not head librarian anymore. And that is a major plot point in the second book because she is struggling with that. And then also um, she has an assistant called Bravity and a kind of guardian angel, I'm gonna call him, called Rami. And then we have a character from a book because these unwritten books can come to life if they're restless. And um, his name is Hero. And so this is kind of like the cast of characters we know from the first book. And in this second installment, I felt like we explored the relationships of these characters a ton more, which I loved. I loved the relationship between Rami and Hero. I definitely want to see that grow. So I'm excited if there is a next installment. I hope maybe later this year there will be a third book. We'll see. Um, yeah. I just really, really enjoyed this. I also liked how the world was expanded in this one. We learn about a completely new wing in the library in this book, and it was a very, very fascinating concept as well. So overall, this was a win for me. I really enjoyed this series. I think if you like books about like hell kind of settings, like afterlife settings, and if you enjoy books about books and libraries, and if you like you know, grown-up characters is definitely an adult series, um, but that still, you know, have a little bit of like struggles and um, are not like fully formed adults maybe and still have some things they need to tackle within themselves. So if you like these kind of things, I highly, highly recommend the series. I enjoyed this so much and I gave it 4.5 stars. So we are four books down now for the medieval thon. Then the next prompt was to read a book with a person on the cover for the clergy profession. And I decided to go with Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. This is a book I had on my TBR for a while now. I think this was the second book of Louise O'Neill I ever bought. <laughs> And it's the third one I'm reading and the first one I ever bought I still haven't read, which is super dumb. But yeah, this was something where I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I mean, the cover gives you the vibe of the book, but I had no idea what the actual plot would be. And so this was a little bit strange at the beginning because this book has two parts to it. The first part is the kind of before part, but not really. Um, I think it's called like one year ago or something like that, or one year before, last year. Last year is the first part. And this is, uh, you know, when you start the book, you think this is kind of like a prologue, but it's definitely the first half of the book. So um, 
In this uh, first part you get to know the main character, her name is Emma and she is definitely a mean girl, she is very very beautiful and people keep telling her. So she definitely knows that she's beautiful and she likes to kind of wager on that and um, yeah, get pro not profit but you know, get just prestige out of that. And so um, you're following Emma and her friends and you see that she's definitely not a likable character but from the, you know, book cover and stuff you can definitely guess that something is going to go wrong and that gives the first part a very weird feeling because you're not really rooting for Emma but you know that something terrible is gonna happen and so you're afraid for her as well. It's really really odd but done in a very intentional and good way. And then the second part is uh, kind of after a year. So there is something happening in the first part, uh, towards the end of the first part, and then it jumps a year ahead and you see how this uh, affects everyone's lives. And um, what is happening is, um, yeah, is related to sexual violence against women. I don't want to like spoil it, but then again, this is not really a spoiler because that's definitely what the book is about. This book is definitely about a rape culture. It's about victim blaming, slut shaming and stuff like that. And so making Emma an unlikable character in the beginning is definitely a choice. And I think it's a very good choice. For me, this book totally worked out in the end. It made me tear up a couple of times. It's a very hard book to read, especially if this is um, triggering for you. And especially um, the ending can be hard to read. This book is uh, a lot about like rape culture and how that affects um, victims of rape and that they're not believed and um, yeah if you have experienced anything like that I would not recommend picking up this book because I think it will be very very triggering and harmful. Um, but yeah I think this book was really good and I gave it five stars. Um, I think it does what it you know, wants to do, wants to achieve. And yeah, it's just, it's just good. It's a good book. It's just not great that this exists in the world, you know. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend this if you want to get more into this topic. It's definitely also an older book on the topic. So yeah, I will seek out more stuff like that in the future. Okay, and then we're on to the last book I finished in January and that was for the prompt to read a book with the chosen one trope and for that I decided to go again with a reread and this is a Monstrous Volume 4. It is called The Chosen, so it was the perfect book to the perfect book to pick up for this prompt. In this a book we follow a Micah Half-Wolf in a world where there is organics and humans and they are at war but um, there is some other stuff going on behind the scenes and Micah is a very big part of that and she wants to uh, stop the war and stop the world from being destroyed basically because there's this whole plot behind the war and the war is just kind of used to uh, make it even easier to destroy all of these people. So this is a comic book series that has a very, very distinct and beautiful art style. Okay, that's some naked pictures, maybe not so good. But yeah, the art in this is stunning. That's the main point why I read these. But also rereading this made me realize how much I love the story and the world and especially the characters. Micah is definitely a very morally gray character. You can see why the people that love her and follow her love her and follow her, but on the same time she's not a good person. And she's quite gloomy as well and yeah, so definitely, yeah, not, not a good person. But yeah, the character I think I love the most is Kippa and yeah, Kippa is a little fox girl. <laughs> she's so cute. And she's going through some stuff in these later issues. So yeah, I love that. I love seeing her development and stuff like that. And this volume focuses a lot on um, Micah's father, who that is, what he wants and stuff like that. So I feel like with every volume, you really get to know another part of the story. Like we have volumes that focus a lot on Zinn. Then we have... Um, you know, Micah's mother, Micah's father and stuff like that. So yeah, 
I really enjoyed the reread of this. I gave it four stars on reread again. I really, really want to see where this uh, goes. And um, yeah, this is just a series that I will follow hopefully until it is finished. So as you can see at the end of January, I managed to be a queen, I believe, um, for the Medieval-a-thon. I had also almost finished the clergy prompts. I only had one more left. And since the Medieval-a-thon is still running until the 9th or 10th of February, we can achieve some more in that readathon and you will hear about that in the February wrap up. But yeah, that would be all the books I wanted to talk about. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did leave a like or nice comment, I always appreciate those. And if you subscribe, I will talk to you soon. Bye!